first agenda of the day. We're going to hear about parks over the air and our QRP from Dwayne Angel, Angel's AA5 KD. on the air probably four, four, maybe five years ago, and uh, I, I'm at uh, almost 1,500 parks now. Um, <clears throat> that sounds like a lot, but I have a friend in Alaska, Dave knows him, um, Mike Sambuco, uh, AL7KC, <clears throat> he just hit 5,000 parks. Uh, you can tell he doesn't have a light. <laughs> but, <Or> a light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, but I, the, the very first park I activated was Lake Thunder. And they now have probably, what, 10 or 12 new ones, um, like uh, Stinch Cone, which is just north of uh, Lake Overholse, uh, which I'm going out to tomorrow. Activate that, which uh, Lucian beat me to it already. Um, parks on the air. It's very simple. You just listen for CQ Pope, whether you're on HF or uh, um, CW or FT8 or sideband. I don't do a lot of sideband because when I usually, everything I've been doing lately is all you know, the QRP. Hence, today's discussion, POTA, QRP. Um, and he asked me to do it, so blame him on him. Tom, that is. So, parks on the air. First thing you need to do is log in and sign up with the POTA website. Because if you're going to get active with POTA, <clears throat> you don't really have to do anything as a Chaser. All you have to do is write the guy's call sign down. You don't even need to know which park he's in because the POTA site will do that for you. Because as an activator, the guy that goes out and activates those parks, he has to upload his log. He has to make at least 10 QSOs before the park is considered activated. So, you know, you can go out to a park and depending on conditions. Um, it takes me about 20-30 minutes to make 10 QSOs. And you can pack up and go home. And when I went to Ohio, when did we go last, when did we go last year, right? Um, I activated, there were five parks that I was going to activate, but I couldn't find two of them. <clears throat> so I activated three parks in about four hours. Um, if I go down to Houston to visit my brother-in-law, there's like five parks on the way down to, to, to Houston that I plan on activating, but we don't know when we're going to go down there next. Uh, I have activated three parks here in Oklahoma in one day, um, so it's fairly easy. But when you get back, you have to upload your QSOs to that website. Because if you don't, A, you won't get credit as the activator for activating that park, and B, they, the, uh, the chasers, won't get credit for working you at that park. So you have to upload your logs. Um, and, and pretty much that's, that's pretty much it. You can go Go right 
right here. You know, say we want the Automatically knows that since Cone Wildlife Refuge is a bona fide park, all these parks have to be vetted by the Oklahoma POTA guy. So if if uh, if you want a park, you know, activated, number one, it has to be a state or federal park. Actually, I think it has to be a state park. So if it's for instance, uh, Red Rock Canyon. <clears throat> it used to be a state park, but then the state sold it to a private entity. But POTA said, okay, as long as it's still free to get in, in other words, they're not charging you to get in, then it will stay a park. So Red Rock Canyon is still a park, even though it's privately owned. Yeah. I'm free. Well, what I meant was uh, public. it's public. public. Yeah. I just want to mention I asked a guy about Fort Reno over there east of El Reno, and he checked on that and uh, said it couldn't be a POTA site because it's under some kind of a, a uh, I can't remember exactly what it said, but bottom line is even though it's free to get in and it's, it's a national, uh, national Park Service actually. Yeah, it's interesting. The uh, Stenchcom is a wildlife preserve, and that's apparently how it got put in because it is not a state park. No, it's, it's not. I, I think it's, it's city state property. Federal. So it, it's, but anytime you have a park that you say, okay, yeah, it's state owns it, okay, they have to send it to the Oklahoma POTA guy. And he vets it whether or not it qualifies to be a POTA park or not. So there are, I want to say there are like 10 or 12 new ones in the last couple of years that have been added to Oklahoma. So it's, it's fairly simple to do. Um, like I said, I've, how many of you activated now? Me, but I'd probably own a about 13. See, he's, he's only been doing this less than a year. Yeah. I've been doing this for four or five years, but then again, I don't, I've only got eight activations. See, we created what? a monster. What? <laughs> hmm, that's right. No. Eight. Eight. Uh, so, uh, go to the map. Are you already going, you going to do that later? Cool thing is, it'll it'll zoom in and show you a map of where they are, and then you can zoom in and touch them, and it'll show you what park that is. So, uh, depending on your yeah, on your be little yellow dots. Okay. Good Lord, what state are you in? Well, well, it, it doesn't come up state default. It <laughs> only comes up default to California. Well, hmm. Mine does. <laughs> I'm story cookies, you're not. Well, you're, you're special. <laughs> no, I'm random. <laughs> so while he's looking, I just saw that Fort Reno is not eligible because it is managed by a nonprofit. That's okay. That's the official poem. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not federal. Okay, the yellow dots are POTA approved parks. And you can bring up any state just by going to the map. And then when you go to the map, you can click on a, and it will tell you Lake Thunderbird State Park. Earlier this year, <clears throat> these park numbers used to have a kilo in front of them. Now it's all changed to US. So that was a nightmare. <clears throat> But um, so now all these parks are labeled U.S., Canada is a CA, Charlie Alpha. Um, but 
you can go and then you can get more info by clicking on this down here and it will tell you or if I could give you the people who last activated it and the number of activations and if we go to stench comb you'll see Lucian's call sign now. What? You haven't you haven't looked at that Lucian? Yeah, yeah. Man. Dwayne, I've got a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, do, how can I put this? If, if, say you go out and you activate a park somewhere, let's say Stinchcomb, and then say if he shows up an hour after you do, do his logs and your logs, do they all count? Yep. Yes, but we're, we're they individual. You, you could have 15 or 20 people all trying to activate Stinchcomb, it doesn't matter. Because, for instance, there's an award called... Uh, now, does that mean all at the same time yeah. or one at a time at a different time of the day? You could have 12 people at Stinchcomb um, yeah. because Stinchcomb is a pretty big area. Either or. But, yeah, yeah, all of them could be activating because it's for them, not yeah. for the group. And on that note, there's a couple of ways... Uh, you'll hear about twofers, okay, or three. And so, for instance, there are parks that are located along a national trail of some kind. And the trail has a number, and the park has a number. And so when that activator is in there, uh, he'll give you both numbers that he's in but the thing about it, a hunter doesn't really have to log what part they're in. Right. That's going to show up on your profile because the activator is the one that logs. And so he's going to log that he's in two parts. The other kind of twofer is you and I go to Stinchingham together and get on the air and we hand the mic to each other. So every contact we make, <clears throat> you'll hear the oper you'll hear the operator go stand by for the second operator and the second operator goes hey this is kd5 lpv you're five nine and boom you've made two contacts <laughs> but the two contacts don't count for let's say lucian and you go out to the park lucian makes the qso and then he hands the mic to you and you make the qso but that QSO is for N5 in UK, not LDU, L5F, not Lucian, okay? So even though it is a twofer, it's a twofer for him and you, and the chaser will get the two. But Lucian won't get, you know. Yeah, I'll only get mine. He'll only get his and you'll get yours. Yeah, okay? yeah. How's W5 MEL? You know, I asked, I looked at this last night and so I could make sure, because I was going to bring this up. I don't know who made that QSO. Magic. It was magic that, that well, he... September, uh, 9th of, September 11th, it looks like, of this year. See, that was Route 66 for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's that, one. that was the deal where we went out 